Hello, look I've been doing a little bit more on my 32. I've dug out the brake parts, the brake master cylinder parts. Now this bracket is one that I made quite a few years ago. I fitted it up with this dual master cylinder and the brackets just mocked up because all these bolts are a lot longer than they need to be but I could, these are like my, my mock-up bolts they're nice and easy to handle so there's the, there's the brake um, pedal box in position and the pedal is modified it has a new lever welded on um, and this obviously this is just temporary for a mock-up that push rod was modified uh, you can see underneath I imagine hang on let me look at the you can see underneath the way that the push rod runs back I think you can anyway yeah can you maybe not great light down there now, the only thing about this setup, it hasn't got any residual valves. On my, on my coupe and on my truck, oh well I'm the Thunderbird for, for that matter, I've got the standard single circuit master cylinder. So what I'm thinking of doing is using the single circuit master cylinder instead because it's just simpler the only drawback to doing that is that I have made brake lines for this setup the residual valves aren't I can buy them in this country but I can't buy them with fittings for quarter inch pipe because this stuff isn't standard fodder in this country it's you can't just lay your hands on it really easily also I think the single circuit cylinder looks better so even though I have got all the brake pipes made for this I'm going to rework it to a single circuit I think I'll at least offer this cylinder up and have a look and see what see what I think okay I've put the master cylinder in place it's got that V-shaped union block at the back there. And what I've done, I've run, I took the pipe that I had from this side, I've took the pipe that I had from this side and I've kind of reshaped it to go into there. I think it needs a little bit more shaping yet. But I've reshaped it there, so I haven't wasted that one. It's not as tidy as it would have been if I'd have done it from scratch but I've kind of tucked it in, kept it tight kept it out of the way so this one here I, I now need to do a pipe from there across to there it's actually a shorter run of pipe isn't it if you think about it so what I suppose I need to do is look at the engine mounts because it might be that these are in the way of the engine mounts hang on Okay, I think these will be below the engine mounts, but it could could potentially be in line with it. These are some engine mounts that I made before, and they kind of go now. I need to shorten that bolt there and file something here to get it, get it in. Oops. Oh dear. Oh dear, I didn't mean to do that. Cameras just fell apart. It's actually still going, the backs fell off the camera. Oh dear. That really does look bad actually. You can't see what I can see at the back. 
All right, okay. <laughs> it's also red, so I'm going to um, just stop the recording at that because I need to align that hole at the front there. But what I can see is that this union is coming right underneath where the engine mount's going to go. So because I want spanner access there, underneath here, this, this pipe here will have to, bear in mind before I was just coming along here and going into the end of there, now I've got a pipe coming out there which I hadn't figured on. So I need to take that into consideration. First of all, this type of brake flaring tool is really good. This is an old one. I think it's a Sykes Pickavant UK manufacturer. So if you ever see something like this, I think Eastwood do a similar thing. You can get them, they've got like a turret on the top with all the different things, but you don't really need that. But I bought this second hand and I actually picked another one up recently and I, I sold it to my friend because I, I ended up with two. And he was dead, dead pleased with it. Okay, so there's the pipe, just kind of flush with the thing. Which one would be the, no that's the first end isn't it, of course it is, yeah that's the first end. Okay, can you see? So you just give it a good pull like that, then you just turn that around and give it another good, there you go. Sweet. Now, the rookie error is to do that and not have the fitting in place. So make sure you got the fitting in place. Okay. The other thing is, this is um, a pipe bending tool and I've made a modification to this. Now, um, let me have a think. You find something that goes up the end of there like that. Then you, what you do, you take the tool and you, you file that end away, that, that piece away there. You have to undo it and file that away. So there's the thing. And now you can put a bend right close to the fitting like that. Okay. See how close that is? You have to get that piece out there. So there you are, there's a, there's a bend right close to the thing now. Now I need to put another bend there, a, a gradual bend, so I'll do that by hand. There's that sharp bend there, and that just keeps the pipe just a, just about away from where I need to put a socket up for, for the bolt there. Not great, but you know, a good get out of jail free. And there's the pipe running across to the other side there. And then this, but the, the, this one, the bolt will be here. It, 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 the problem on, on this side is it, it's got to go forward, you see. If it was going forward, it'd be going straight to where the bolt is. This one will be okay. Okay. There you go. So I've, I've reworked the front pipe now. So it goes from there, underneath, along there, to there, and across to there. Not too bad and there's there's a hole there so I can make a little clip that'll go there and a little clip that'll go there and that's tucked underneath the cross member it's be out of the way there it will. 
Okay, thanks very much for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. I need to be able to put juice into that break pipe and get juice over to that side there. I'm going to do it using this T. Now I've, I'm going to use a method that I've never seen anywhere else and it's something, an idea I came up with. Basically I'm going to use this piece, I'm going to use this piece which is, which has been cut off a, a long, a long tube nut and I've cut it off, skimmed it up in the lathe and I'm going to use that to join this to that with a copper washer in the middle. I've trial fitted it and what I've done is took this on the lathe and polished that face there. I held a bolt in the lathe with the right thread, put this on the bolt, spun it and polished that there against a flat face with um, abrasive paper. So I'm going to fit this on here. Like I say, I've never seen this done before. Uh, I hope it works okay. I know it'll work okay, but you know, I hope it works okay in service. The reason I polished it is because the face, as standard, has like an extruded finish. So this goes in here. Like this. Now I've made this as long as I can, yet without it bottoming out. So that goes into there. And now that's just snugged onto the washer there. Okay. Now what I'm, I'm going to do, I'm going to have to bend that, twist the hose a little bit to bring that like that. But it is tight. And the idea is that this will go in here. If in doubt, wobble it about. So that can go like that. The complication with this job is that the engine mount goes here, so I want it clear under here for the um, thing. So I'm going to have this going like this. Just do, do the other side up there. It's not a very nice day here today, it's quite rainy. I won't go mad with the fitting, I'll just nip them up. You know, this is just a trial fit. I, I've got a tube nut spanner somewhere, but I'll use that you know, when it comes time to do it properly. So there we go. Okay, so I thought you just might be interested to see that novel use of um, putting a banjo fitting straight onto the end of the pipe. It, it saves having another length of pipe with two fittings, you know, making the bridge. Okay, hope you found that interesting. I hope somebody might find that useful. Um, I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.
Hello. I'm doing a, an oil change on the truck and I'm just a little bit baffled but um, let me show you what I've just found. Okay, I've drained the oil and I've let it drain for an hour or so and I've put the plug back in and I've just put two and a half litres of oil in it because it's on a tin with a measure on the side. It's the same as this and it was at that point there, two and a half litres. I'll just show you what the dipstick says now. Right, can you see that it's part way up the safe driving range? It's about halfway actually. So, I'm going to put another one and a half litres in to make it up to four litres, which I believe is about the right, the right amount. I'll put that back in there. So I've just put another one and a half litres in, which brings that down to around about the two litre mark there. So let's see what it says on the stick now. It's over the full mark. So I need to maintain that oil level at or near the full mark, don't I, for it to be the right level. That's a quarter of an inch above the full mark. So that safe driving range, I don't trust it because I did a I did a run the other day and um, it was in the safe driving range but near the bottom. And I ran up the motorway and it was okay on the motorway but when I was doing some slow manoeuvres around some steep hills and sharp bends it kept losing oil pressure around the bends on the hills. It was a hilly area. And again I looked for a car spares place, couldn't see one so I didn't put any oil in. And again it was fine on the motorway when the revs were up. Uh, and that's, so what I thought I'd do, instead of topping it up, I thought I'd do an oil change, you know, instead of sort of wasting a top up and then changing the oil later, I'll change the oil while it's already low. So that's a little bit surprising now and I can see why it was losing oil pressure because it needs to be maintained up near that full mark. I, I'm going to try something, I'll come back in a, a few seconds. Okay, I've took the um, funnel out. What I've done, I, I've put the funnel into the empty container because I, I, I emptied that one. I had two and a half litres and I've just put some in out of that one. So the bowl is underneath with the, what I drained out in it. That's how much I drained out. Don't look like very much, does it? Just make sure I haven't made a mistake. For all intents and purposes, a litre is very similar to a quart. You know, when you're talking to these levels of accuracy that we need for this job. Okay, that's going to take a little while to drain out, but I've got 99% of it. Here you go, look, there's only two litres there, see? Can you see the, the level? Two litres? Okay, 
So, blimey. So it really was very low on oil, wasn't it? It was running with about two quarts of oil in it. So that's just proven that there's a bit of a mismatch on the dipstick and that safe driving range can't be trusted. Okay, good. Right, so I'll leave it at that then. There's just a little bit of information. Don't trust the marks on the dipstick. Always fill with a known quantity and then make a note of what the dipstick reads when you've got your known quantity in. Um, just so there's no confusion. There's no filter on this vehicle. That's why I wanted to change the oil. I don't think it's been changed since I st started running it. Cheers then. That's all from me. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye. Hello. Um, I've come out to the garage today to continue boring the old 59 block. Um, these four bores, these ones along this side of old Binder, this is the one with the crack in it. These three, that one, that one and that one have been bored and unfortunately I went a little bit over on this this one here it hasn't got enough of a press fit so I'm going to try some Loctite sleeve retainer on that one not ideal what I was doing I was trying to use this and compare it to the bores on the other side but for some reason although this was saying it was smaller and I kept trying to go just a bit bigger and a bit bigger and a bit bigger it ended up, it ended up too big okay so I'm going to get set up now and um, start boring this one this this one here has got a little bit of the surface has gone down a little bit there that's just a spot of grease there but it's a nice finish but I'm kind of trying to hone my technique okay gotta go the battery's going I'm on the last bore now and I'm trying to for want of a better expression hone my technique I'll show you what the bore looks like pretty I mean <laughs> you know blimey pretty bad eh? but you can see down the bottom that's where the bore is still okay and that's where I've trued, trued the boring machine to that part of the bore down there. There's no good trying to true it at the top here. Um, when I did this one, you can see the surface finish looks pretty good. What I did, I imagine it's starting off like this, you know. I roughed it, roughed it, roughed it, and then on the last two passes. I fitted a new tip. I fitted a new tip there in the in the tool. And so I fitted a new tip, took the last but one pass at 15th out, and I measured it carefully to see how it compared to my uh, target measurement, and then I turn the tip round and use the other new edge and just did the one cut at the final measurement to get the size I wanted um, which is a, a light press fit so now I'm leaving that new tip in it's done one, pa one pass on either end so I'm going to do half the roughing with one side half the roughing with the other side then I'll put another new tip in for the two final cuts. That's what I'm saying. Uh, I'm trying to hone my technique, not hone it, but you know, improve my technique. Now I'm on the last cylinder. <laughs> okay, these are being bored for liners, by the way, not, not for pistons. Okay, I'm not going to show the whole process. Um, I don't know where the camera's pointing. Okay. I'm not going to show the whole process um, because boring 
it is a little bit like the name would suggest, but um, you can see there's some bad pits down there. What I might do is take a series of photos after every every pass, and then you know you'll see it gets slightly better every go. So I think I'll do that. Okay, I'll catch you later. There's the last cut going down. That's a 15 pound cut that is. That's from 3.425 nominal to 3.440 nominal. And I'm hoping it'll come out about a tail down. My, my chromatus setting was 3.438 and that's a brand new tip just changed in that's locked in there so fingers crossed I didn't take a photograph of the last couple of cuts because once the bore had cleared up that it all looks the same Okay, back in a bit. There's the machine running away on the final cut. And that stand works really well because it leaves this side open so you can reach underneath and measure. And uh, it accepts a tray there for, to catch all the dust. You see all the bits falling down onto the light there. These lights have been great. I wish I could find some more of the same. I've got two of them, but I can't find the other one. Okay, I'm waffling. Right, I'll bring you back when there's more to show. Cheers then. Bye. Hello. Um, I've... It's Sunday night and I've just come out to the garage and I'm not even dressed for it, you know, when you come out and you just start tinkering around. I've just taken off this brake pipe that I had running along there and I've made a new one. So this one's a little bit more pleasantly shaped. I've tilted that angle bracket over the angle block there over so that one can go straight to the torque tube there and I'll show you a little bit about that in a minute this one so this one comes back along it can be clipped to the side of there not very good light there but it can be clipped to the side of that bracket it's not under here it comes forward kinks up over the frame runs along the inside of the frame and comes down to that T there, that union. So I think that's quite neat really. And I can put some clips along along the bottom of here. You know, it looks okay, doesn't it? I'll, I'll show you it from the other side. <clears throat> so there it is, there's the front. Let's show it from the end where it gets the fit. So there it is at the master cylinder. Looks all right. Comes forward underneath, kinks up, kinks out, and runs along. Kinks up there just to give a little bit of clearance on that bracket. I imagine it'll be a little bit this way, and into the T there. Okay, let me show you. Now that there is the T where I made that special fitting from a, a long pipe union. 
and I intended to do the same here. Except I found uh, some sort of a pipe fit in there which has the correct threads to screw in. So what I've done, it's, it's like a tube nut. I think it's for olives actually, I think it takes an olive, you know, with like a, a nut that goes on. But what I've done, I've cut a tiny little bit of brake pipe and flared the end to act as a, you know, a, a seal in effect. So that will screw on there. That's what I've done in effect with the tube nut there, but this one means I'm not using a um, not using a um, tube nut or a copper washer rather. So then this will you get, you get it in context. You, you can imagine the torque tube running down here. This will affix to the side of the torque tube like that. So personally, I think that is quite a neat installation with you know it looks far better than the dual circuit cylinder and I haven't ended up with you know like a fitting and a piece of pipe and another fitting all hanging in mid-air and getting fatigued um, I think that'll work out okay and I'm quite happy with this pipe run now that looks nice and tidy I kind of mocked it up with the old pipe and then once I was happy with how it was but not quite happy with the run of the old pipe I've made it again in a new pipe you know this ought to be the car that I'm using my best bits on you know it's a 32 Ford you don't skimp and save and use all your tattiest old bits on it do you you, you know you bring out the nice stuff Okay, I just wanted to show you that because I'm quite happy with the way that's come out. And it was interesting to find that fit in. I don't think I've got any more. I don't even know what it's called and I don't know where it came from. So um, it would be interesting if I could find what that was. You know, because it might be something that I'd want to do again. As I'm looking at this now, I'm looking at all that rubbish on the floor. Look at all that. That's um, left over from messing about with that compressor over there. Anyway, that's a job. I think that job has come out okay. And now that, now that I'm settled on using this master cylinder, I might reshape this bracket here, put a cut there and there, and just bring this, bend it here and bring this in like that. I might do that. I might not. Okay, let's leave it at that then for now. Just made a, a little clamp there, look. And another one there. There's another one, where is it? Down there. And there's another one that will go on the side of there when I've drilled and tapped a hole in it and I think they're stainless steel these, this, these bits of metal are stainless steel so I think that'll be okay won't it when it's so I think that'll be okay when it's uh, you know all bolted on stop everything flapping about I've had a look and I think that this piece here is the middle part from a quarter to quarter tube straight connector compression fitting because the for a quarter tube the, the, the threads are the right the same threads as these because this is all quarter tube I believe that's a quarter tube straight compression fitting a coupler the, the middle part okay Another little bit of progress. Good little job there, pleased with that. 
Okay, right, I've taken the engine mount off and I've kind of tidied it up a bit, there it is. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just put a bit of paint on this side here, that side that will be sort of sandwiched in the frame and again I'll kind of assemble it up wet. No need to go too, you know, no need to go too mad, bloody hell, it'd be, this would last hundreds of years, <laughs> you know what I mean, it ain't going to rust out, is it? But I just wanted to put a bit of paint on the parts that I won't be able to get to afterwards. That can go in there now. Whoops, I don't know where the hell I was pointing the camera there. So that's painted. And that can go in there now. It has to be kind of hammered in. It's a, it's a tight fit. I've drilled holes there that line up with those. And I've drilled a <laughs> hole down there that lines up with that one that comes up through, through the cross member. So when this is in place, I'll measure that gap in there. I'll measure that gap and make a space. The spacer will go in and then the bolt can go in. A bolt can go in. So that's looking pretty good. I just need to tweak the tweak these to get them in line. Right then, uh, let's have a look what we got here. I'm shaking a can. I'm going to leave that now. Okay. There's the engine mount in place. I know they're only quarter inch bolts coming down through the top, but you know, I don't want to open the holes out unnecessarily. You probably can't see it, but there is a spacer up that gap now, and a, there's an 8mm bolt through it. Uh, and there's two big 5 16 bolts through the outer rail, which is the um, shock absorber bolt. And I've just put a bit of Put a bit of rag over the brake pipe. Well, put a bit of paint on here. in doesn't it? You can't see it now hardly. So just go to the other side now, do the other side the same. I won't put too much on, I'll, I'll let, let it dry and put another coat on when I'm finished. to pick some better bolts but you know hey it's not looking too bad really I have I have had an engine and gearbox in this chassis so I know that that engine mount will be okay where it is <laughs> that's going to be another marked famous last words isn't it but you know let's get that other one done then okay back in a bit There's the second engine mount in place. Didn't take me too long that time because I kind of had an idea what I was doing. It actually fitted slightly better. I didn't have to uh, file any holes. There's the first side with a little bit more paint on it. Not dry yet. I put a cloth over the pipes so the pipes would remain unpainted. So there you go. Quite pleased with that job. Brake pipes, engine mounts, all in, not interfering with each other. Novel fitment of the pipe there. Novel fitment of the pipe there. So, I think maybe that bracket can come off. 
I've marked a line down underneath where the master cylinder kind of aligns with. I think I'm going to make a cut there, bend it, weld it, bring it together and kind of just generally tidy the whole thing up and drill and tap a hole on the side or just drill th a through hole on the side might be easier for, for the clip for the brake pipe but there you can see that bracket and you can see how it fits around the uh, engine steady rod and it also stops short of the raised lip at the bottom of that vertical section you can see the raised lip running beyond so it kind of fits snugly into the flat portion there it's just cut from a piece of heavy wall tubing you know rectangular tube but the the benefit of it being set back just that little bit is that the master cylinder can sit high higher so there you go, things are taking shape. One thing leads to another. And sometimes you have to kind of jump ahead a little bit to make sure that one thing that you do doesn't interfere with another thing. And that's led me to do the engine mounts. I'd made those engine mounts years ago. Um, it was just a case of digging them out and bolting them on. Okay, thank you very much. I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers then. Bye.